I don't really know where to start. Normally, I'm just like a savage, I'm right, but this month has been complicated. Hi guys, it's Leanne and welcome to my wrap up for February, actually on time, yo. Who is she? She's me, she needs, I need to stop that, that's. My save February TBR was, I am so pleased with myself, I think, in all honesty, that if I hadn't had the pressure of coming on and being like, listen, I'm gonna read all of these books because I have read nothing this month, I might not have read as many as I ended up doing and I might not have fallen in love with so many books. So this month I have got a three tops and a three bottoms for you and I think I'm going to mix it up again because I quite enjoyed doing that for January's wrap up so we're going to do one and one and one and one just just because that's my preference. I mean if it's not your preference please do actually let me know in the comments but that's my preference currently so that's what we're going to do. The first book that I am going to talk about is just one that I am so unreservedly fond of now. I'm so sad that it took me so long to read it. This book is one of my lovely wife Helen's favourite books and I just, I did the thing where I let the hype get to me and I decided not to read it because I was like, a lot of people are talking about it and then I watched the movie. The movie was really good and I was like, I don't want the book to ruin the movie. Sacrilege. Seriously though guys, let's be perfectly honest, just between you and me, like some movies are better than the books. It's just just be honest okay okay I feel like it's a bit redundant telling you guys what this one is about because I think I might literally be the last person to read it in the world but nevertheless this book is about Mark Watney he is a botanist and an engineer and an astronaut and he is on a piloted mission to Mars so his team are on the surface of Mars and a sandstorm hits and they have to leave very urgently and Mark gets hit by a piece of shrapnel and his team believe that he's dead and so they emergency exit without him and then he wakes up and he is on Mars and he is alone but it turns out that he's alone with a definite penchant for monologuing to his audio diary and he's a he, mm, Mark Watney may be my soulmate. I considered asking my wife for, you know, to, an addition to our marriage if Mark Watney was a real person because he's so very me. If you like my humour, you're gonna like this book. He's such a sarcastic little bean and yet he's so terrified that the only thing that he can do is just get on with his everyday because if he thinks about the magnitude of the fact that he's on Mars and his food is gonna run out and he's alone, it's too much. I had a cry a few times during this novel. I've been very emotional recently with my books but I, I, just, I super enjoyed this one. There's so much mass and science in this one that I thought hmm it's maybe going to put me off and I mean it's tiny tiny font but I was like yeah, I, I will give it a go and I'm so glad that I did because none of it felt tedious. I felt like I understood everything that he was talking about and I also listened to this one on audiobook and the audible narrator who I will put along here because I never know anybody's name is fabulous. I mean absolutely amazing. If you like audiobooks this is a must listen on audiobook. Do not read it, run straight to the narrator. I just, I'm so glad that I read this. It's now on my treasured read shelves. For those of you who don't know, I have a most beloved treasured read shelf on Goodreads. I will link it down below in the description so you can go see. And I only put books on there that will endure in my memory. And sometimes obviously I end up shuffling them off because they haven't. You never know. But this one, I, d I don't think this one's going anywhere. Oh. The next one that I have is No Exit by Taylor Adams and this is a bottom for the month. I actually DNF'd this at about 30%. Guys, this was tedious. I, I mean, it was tedious. For a thriller, I was not thrilled. Mm -mm. This one is about a woman who is racing home because her mother is dying. She is college age. For some reason she thinks it's a good idea, this is my first issue, to drive through I think the Rockies when it's pelting down with snow and there's been weather warnings everywhere. 
got into college, girl, I do. We need to have a conversation about personal safety and also about like packing food and water in your car and like blankets and I mean I know I live in Scotland and so these things are second nature to me but girl anyway she's racing home she gets stuck of course and she pulls into a tiny little roadside motel which is very much a like a, a place between two places and nothing else and she pulls in next to a van and long story short and after a lot of needless twaddle that I didn't care about she goes out to make a phone call to try and get a signal can't get a signal to tell anybody at home where she is and so on her way back she realises that there is a young girl held prisoner in the back of the van that she's parked next to that is essentially the entire story I was so excited for this one I was so incredibly hyped I was, I was really glad actually because it has been on so many people's most anticipated for 2019 but I uh, I found out that it was already out in the UK and Europe and I think Australia as well and I just I hated this it was terrible so for a start this was not a convincing female perspective at all this does not in any way feel like a young girl talking to you it feels like a middle-aged white male so that was my first issue. My second issue is that absolutely every detail was picked over in like glorious Technicolor when she got into the motel. I know exactly how many vending machines there are. I know what level the coffee's at. I know what colour the shutters are. I know that somebody locked up about half an hour ago because the coffee's still warm even though she's nowhere near it. And it, it, this just, it goes on and on and on on and in the end I just didn't care I didn't care if she got kidnapped I didn't care about the nameless faceless girl in the back of the van I just I didn't care I didn't care and we parted ways and I won't be trying another one from this author because that was how much I didn't care no second chances amount of didn't care the next top that I've got for you is a book that I just I feel so fortunate to have read in my life and I'm so glad it exists and I will definitely reread it because I feel like it is what the true crime slash true crime memoir genre really needs. It needs more books like this and that is I Let You Go by Denise Fergus. So I've talked really recently about this case but in 1993 James Bulger who was a two-year-old boy was lured away from his mother Denise in a shopping centre in Liverpool by two ten-year-old boys who took him for a massive walk across half the city and abused and murdered him and left him on some railway lines. It was a few days before the boys were caught and then when they were caught they confessed but very much blamed each other and subsequently were put on trial and were convicted of the murder and since then they have both been given new identities and one of them has re-offended twice for child sex offences and is back in jail um, in the UK. I read The Sleep of Reason by David James Smith which is very much thought to be the, the non-fiction true crime book about this case. David James Smith was a reporter at the time and he's had pretty much unprecedented access to the case and to everybody involved in it including the perpetrators families and I really loved this book because he gives such an even-handed account of everything he looks at the impact not just on Denise and Ralph who was James's father and their family but also the wider community and also the families of the two boys who perpetrated the crime and what it's done to the criminal justice system and the press because it's the they were the youngest kids since like the 20s or something like that ever to be convicted of a murder and so there was new laws and new legislation and nobody knew what they could report on and what they couldn't report on and in the midst of all of this James's family somewhat got lost but I loved that David James Smith acknowledged that and he acknowledged like how horrible this was for everybody there was no judgment at any point in this book and I really love it I honestly if you if you want to read about this case this is the book to pick up when this book came out I wasn't sure but I did pick it up and I listened to it on audiobook and although it's not narrated by Denise it is narrated by a woman with a Liverpudlian accent which 
oh, it was so oh it was actually like listening to Denise I have listened to a lot of interviews with her and it was like listening to Denise and that made it so much worse this is such a well written book it is so well articulated she is so emotionally aware of her situation and she is not at all afraid to tell you her opinion on things but she never does it in a judgmental way and although she's very clear about what she feels about the perpetrators and what they did and about the laws that she subsequently campaigned for she's never out for revenge she's only out for justice and I just I just appreciated her so much she is such an impressive woman and thankfully she has gone on to have other children and a happy marriage and pick her life up again but of course how do you ever get over something like this obviously trigger warnings it's a very difficult case to read about but I'm very pleased that I read about it <laughs> the next bottom that I have ugh, I feel like I kind of need to I'm gonna discuss these two bottoms in conjunction because I, f I feel like I feel like I need to explain myself okay so the, the two the last two bottoms that I have for the month are both Matthew Riley books and the first one is Ice Station and the second one is Temple. Now we're going to talk about Ice Station first because although it's in my bottoms for the month I didn't hate it. I feel really conflicted about this book. What I've discovered is that I love Matthew Riley's characters, I love the dialogue, I love the pace of the books but I hate the plot. I hate I hated the plot. This one is about Wilkes Ice Station, which is an ice station in Antarctica, which in this world is a largely unclaimed section of place. And this particular ice station are drilling down into the ice shelf to get pockets of what is essentially prehistoric dinosaur gas. And they're studying it for what properties is in it. And as they're drilling down all the way into this ice that hasn't been seen since the prehistoric era, they hit metal and they assume spaceship and then the bad things happen and the US send out a team of elite marines to secure the station and then the station comes under attack and everything goes to shit basically. There's a lot of things hitting the fan and they are very evenly spread over everybody in this book. I I actually I got through this book really quickly it's a huge book it's like 600 odd pages I got through it really quickly but I just so stupid <laughs> there are so many plot holes there are so so many plot holes there are so many times where weapons are used when they wouldn't really work there's like there's fuel in a craft which has been abandoned in Antarctica for years and years and years and years and yet it turns over like that no problem and the fuel is all fine and not for what it did. It's so stupid. <laughs> but on the other hand if you want an adventure novel it's kind of good so it was, it was a bit of a palate cleanser this month. Um, I I don't know I don't know what I think about it I don't I didn't hate it but it's on my bottoms because I I'm not totally against reading the next book in the series either. I don't know. I don't know. Usually, usually I'm such an, I'm a decisive bitch. I usually am like, I don't like this. This is bad. But this wasn't bad. This was just stupid. But entertaining? <laughs> Question mark. So the other one, the other bottom is of course Temple, which was the other book that I was going to go on and read straight after Ice Station. I don't know if it was impacted slightly by having read Ice Station and being like, okay, my brain cannot process this amount of sheer stupidity, or whether it was just that it was not for me. But this one is about a linguist who is pretty much press ganged, although it doesn't take that much convincing, into going on a mission to decipher some old hieroglyphics and scrolls in a book and Incan temple disasters and uh yeah, it was terrible the uh the linguist was a whiny moany little mm, 
and I didn't like him at all and also I did, did not understand his motivation for agreeing to all of the things that he agreed to so readily without any questions and then I discovered just as just as I was thinking oh we might be getting into the actual like stabby bits and shooty bits and running through temples Indiana Jones style we are suddenly back in the 1500s with a monk that I did not care about saving an Incan prince who I did not believe in and it just it was ju it was bad. It was it was bad. I am I'm, I'm so sorry, Kirsty. Kirsty is my podcast partner in crime, and I know I know that she's judging me over my shoulder right now because Matthew Riley's some of her most beloved books. But I'm sorry, girl. I hated it. I hated it. But the last top, leaving it on a high note that I want to talk about this month. Oh. I invited you guys to throw stones at the screen when I said that I had not read this yet and you know what I will take every single one of those stones and I, I will I will put them in a pouch and I will carry them around my neck and that will be the guilt that I have for not reading this book that was strangely biblical um <laughs> this book is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and okay if you're one of the people who replied to that post and were like, yeah, I haven't read this either and I don't really have that much interest in it. Guys, read it. Read it. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. So this is the story of Star who is in a strange position. She lives in what is essentially the Black Projects. She comes from a family who are doing quite well considering, but she is surrounded by people who are not doing well and gang culture and drugs and she goes to because her parents do not want her to attend the black high school where you basically go to get high or pregnant as she says uh they she attends a, a white very preppy school not that far away and she's a different person when she's there she drops all of her street slang she does not talk about the kinds of artists that she likes etc she's she's just a she's a totally different person she changes herself to fit in and then one day she's heading back from a party getting a ride from an old friend Khalil who is also black and who she hasn't seen for a while but they were very good friends growing up and they're stopped by a police officer for whatever reason it doesn't matter why they were stopped they were stopped and the police officer who is white shoots Khalil and kills him in front of Star. He is unarmed, he has not posed any kind of obvious threat and the story then spirals from what happens directly afterwards to the impact on this very tight-knit community to what happens if you have information about drugs and people who sell drugs and you decide to tell people about that information and um it is oh it's it's visceral in some places it's hard it's so hard to read it's so unfair there's so much unfairness in this novel however i fell in love with star and what angie thomas does is very much construct a family and i felt like this complicated is an incredibly complicated family dynamic but I didn't feel at any point like I was confused or it was unbelievable. I knew exactly who all the players were immediately and I understood why it was complicated and you kind of respected that. And you, so you were sitting there with Star in this odd relationship that she has with her father and her uncle and then with this really tight-knit relationship that she has with her mum at the same time she's at that teenage stage of rebelling and wanting to not be tied down and the sibling relationships oh my god sibling relationships were great I loved everybody in this book there was not a single character I wasn't rooting for I am so so pleased that I read this and this was how out of touch that I was uh when I talked about this last month I was like there's a movie coming out blah and you guys were like ah, Leanne it's been out for ages it's coming out on dvd now so I'm gonna get it on dvd and I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it um, very soon because uh, I just I need more I need more I'm only I also listened to this one on audiobook and the narrator is amazing I'm so glad that I did because the narrator 
very much gives a voice to Star in a way that felt believable to me. I'm only sad that the narrator actually also does On the Come Up, which is Angie Thomas's new book, because now the narrator is Star in my head and I don't want to hear Star's voice on another character, so I'm just going to have to read that one and hope that I get everything, because it is about hip-hop and I'm a very white girl. And I'm not saying that white girls can't like hip hop, I'm just saying that this one knows freaking zero about it. So I, I'm hoping that I enjoy this one and that I manage to, that it doesn't confuse me too much. Uh, but I will definitely report back because it'll be happening soon because in fact I have already purchased it. I purchased it pretty much the day after I finished this because it was so good. So those were all of my tops and bottoms for February. I'm quite impressed with myself. I ended up reading, after not reading anything in the month, I ended up, I think I ended up with six or seven books by the end of the month, which I was really, really pleased about. So yeah, let me know, as always, if you have read any of the books that I've talked about here today. Let me know your opinion on Matthew Riley, if you have read Matthew Riley, and if you have any adventure books that aren't Matthew Riley, maybe recommend them to me in the comments, because I wonder if I'm just bad at reading adventure books and my suspension of disbelief, or whether it's just that Matthew Riley's not for me. It's not for me. Oh, and if you're Kirsty, don't at me. I already heard you. I'm a terrible friend.